This is my new computer. It is a Dell Optiplex 9020 with a Haswell i5. It is replacing this beast over here, which is my AMD Vishera 8320 on a Gigabyte motherboard. That is too big for me. This is perfect, but it is lacking one thing. This is an Intel Core i7-4770. This is what's going to be replacing the processor in here currently. It is a Intel i5-4950, I believe. I'll put a sub on the screen uh, if I make a mistake. But um, we're going to get in and we're going to, since I have a little time today because, because I have a doctor's appointment, um, I just wanted to do this really quick and see if I could get it done. So um, we'll come back and we'll have the computer open. As you can see, I've already made some improvements in here. I have my NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 Ti Boost with 2 gigs of RAM. I've got my Cooler Master CX600M. I've got my Crucial 480 gig SSD. You don't know if you can see it down there. 16 gigs of PNY RAM. And uh, we're going to put the uh, i7 in here. That's the Dell stock heat sink. Seems to be hooked up to the case intrusion switch, which I didn't take off. Um, but I just want to take the heat sink off and replace the processor, so we'll make that work. I'll be right back. So I have the heat sink off, and there's the processor down there. And I'm going to apply a little bit of the old Arctic Clean instead of the old isopropyl and I have Arctic MX4 in there for thermal paste so we will take the new processor and stick it in there and uh, see what happens so I hit the heat sink with some Arctic Clean and if you don't know what Arctic Clean is it's a cleaner for your heat sink and processor the number one the white is the actual cleaner. The number two purifies the surface for what it's worth. So um, I've already done the heat sink. It looks pretty good. There are some old dried bits of thermal paste on the motherboard uh, because they put too much thermal paste at the factory. So now we're going to hit the processor with some purifier because it's pretty clean already and then we're going to drop it in and then we'll put the heat sink back. Okay, so I got the processor and the heat sink back on. The fan is plugged in. The case intrusion switch was not hooked up to the fan. It was just messed up into the veins of the heat sink. So there's only one thing left to, left to do, less to do, and that is to button it back up, take it upstairs, plug it in, and smoke test it. Smoke test. I have all my external drives hooked up and everything's ready to go. So it is posting. <sighs> hmm. We now have a flashing cursor on the screen. Um Give me a moment, and I will uh, I'll come back and see if I can't solve this. We'll turn it off for now. Okay, maybe this time we'll have a better shot at it. I know what happened. Let's try it again. And there it goes. It's booting up. And the fans on my graphics card are a little bent, so they make that sound when they're going crazy, and they're just starting up. There, it's booting into Windows now, if, if you can see that. Okay, this is better. The real reason I built this computer was 
to get away from that big hulk. So that's what I've done and it seems to be pretty good. It's not too hot or anything. We'll see that in Specky in a minute. But I think this was a successful upgrade and uh, yet again, perfect. It's the weather like. And we can detect the location. Start. We'll get the weather really quick. So in my area right now it's 63 degrees. So there you go. So very nice. We'll have some specs and benchmarks for you in a minute. Here's the computer after the change. The uh, i7 is on the left, the i5 is on the right. It is a 4590. Um, it was running a little cooler than the uh, new processor, but there's not much of a difference in the overall specs as far as Specky is concerned. This thing is basically the same. The thing that surprised me was is that I don't see any improvement in the pass mark score. I mean, there's a little bit. Let's open that up. There's a slight improvement. The pass mark is 3888, still in the 53rd percentile. So that's okay. Um, graphics came up a little bit. So did everything. I mean, everything is fine. Um, the uh, Win Arrow didn't change one iota. So this is with the i5, 8.1. This is with the i7, 8.1. The thing that's dragging me down is, I mean, everything improved except desktop graphics performance. It was the same. And uh, memory operations per second. I don't know why it went up. It's memory. It's the same memory as before. The uh, transfer rate is what's dragging us down to 8.1. But, I mean, you know, it's synthetic. It's just a benchmark. Does it perform the way I want it to? Hell yes. Um, is it big enough of a difference for me to recommend just moving from one computer to another? Eh, probably not. If you're gaming, like I said, you probably want a better graphics card. And you also want to have like less, you want to have a better uh, SSD. I have a four-year-old crucial 480 gig SSD. It's probably about ready to go. So, I mean, I wouldn't pin my hopes that this is going to be a relative speed demon. Is it fast enough for me? Sure. The placebo effect probably has me thinking it's a little snappier. Um, I think this was a worthwhile upgrade for me. Things like uh, Photoshop do open up a bit faster if I can get down there. Things like Photoshop open faster. Can I make a new document? Sure. And let's do that. And let's make a lens flare. Because now it's not it's not difficult anymore anyway. Movie Prime 131. Say okay. Boom. It's done. Uh I don't have any problems with this. Um, the thing that really opens up better is Illustrator. But, I mean, this is not for gaming for me, like I said. This is for video editing. Or, uh, not video editing, for ripping movies from Plex. So we're going to test that and see how that works out. But I would say this is a worthwhile upgrade for you if, you have, if you're planning on putting in more RAM and a better graphics card. Otherwise, keep what you've got um, is fine uh, that is it um, this was a short one I know and uh, uh, it's not Mac related because people like these upgrade videos for
for some strange reason. I've got 16,000 views on my i7 upgrade in my HP uh, ProBook. And I've got 50 views on my uh, Strawberry iMac review or uh, upgrades. So the new PC stuff is probably what's trending, but I'm still going to do the Mac stuff because it makes me happy. Anyway, that is it. Um, hope you liked this video. Hope you learned something. Uh, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye. I just wanted to let you know the cost of the parts I purchased so you could see what I spent. Naturally, the Optiplex was the most expensive component at $133.12. The i7 was next at $124.35. I didn't actually need an i7, but I did have to have a hard drive caddy for my additional 3 quarter inch hard drive and the ATX power supply to Dell motherboard adapter. I really plan on doing a regular video schedule, so if you folks are interested in these sorted goings-on, stay tuned.